Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batman Earth 44, and I think it goes by another name, which I just don't know. I'm not reviewing the character or the fiction behind it, I'm only reviewing the figure. However, if you would like to tell me about this character a little bit, I would be in your debt. I'd appreciate it, because it's a pretty cool design. Um, so go ahead and do that in the comment section below if you want to do that. But this is a pretty strong release from McFarlane. It's not perfect, there are a few issues, you might have noticed one of them already. But there are only a few, it's a very solid release from them. So there's some stuff to talk about. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands about seven and a quarter to the very top of his ears, maybe seven and an eighth to the top of his head. I know they're not actually ears by the way. Uh, it makes him about 18 centimeters to the top of the head. So relatively well in scale with the other things, although the this line's not in scale really at all with itself, so it's kind of strange, but all in all, this thing has really good proportions. And first thing I'll do is ask you a question of the day. Does scale matter to you within a line? Do you care if things are in scale with each other or does it not bother you at all if things are taller than they should be or shorter than they should be? Okay, so let's talk about the figure. First things first, other than the arms being a little bit too long, maybe, and the crotch being a little bit too high, uh, not maybe, the arms are probably most definitely a little bit too long and the crotch is very high, but that's mostly because of how thick the crotch is and I probably haven't said that before, but I probably will say it again. Uh, it has really good proportions. You'll notice the thighs are thicker than the calves. They're a little bit longer. He actually has a V-shape to his torso. His pecs are actually shaped like pecs and they're not all skinny and squished in. His shoulders actually stick out. His biceps have the right thickness. One good rule for arms, if you're sculpting arms, is the, when you're looking at it from the front, the bicep should be narrower than the forearm. And when you're looking at it from the side, and I say bicep, I mean the whole upper arm, the bicep should be wider than the forearm. They have that rule going there. You can tell that there's some kind of suit going on, but that the muscul muscles, <laughs> the muscles are all pretty much where they're supposed to be, assuming the suit fits on him like a normal human. It's just very well put together. The shoulders are a little bit back. The neck is at a slight angle. It is very well done. The junction here is very well hidden. I don't think it's gonna function again, but we'll see. All in all, they just really nailed the proportions. He doesn't have giant feet. Almost perfect. There are definitely a few issues, like I said, but it's a very well put together figure. The paints on mine aren't perfect, but they're pretty darn clean, and I'm guessing if you're buying it at the store, you'll be able to find one with a pretty good paint job. This orange is not easy to paint. They did a really clean job with that. The blue, probably not so hard, but still a really clean job. It's not bad. The only thing that really stands out to me is the fact that his diaper being a softer material, uh, it doesn't match the rest of the figure. It kind of stands out as, well, it's not the right color, so it makes it stand out even more than the fact that it's really big. But otherwise, it's a, it, is, it is an aesthetically pleasing figure, if I can speak English, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. They did a really good job on the looks. Now, as far as the accessories go, we only have this thing, which I think is an alternate hand. Again, I don't really know anything about this character, but it fits on like an alternate hand, and it has five things which might be similar to fingers. The uh, only problem is it's an entirely different finish than the rest of the figures, so it looks kind of weird, but you do get that. Uh, that's as far as real accessories go, anyway. You do also get the little black display stand in there. If you like those, it's on the back of the card. You have to cut up the clamshell to get to it. Although you had to do the same thing in there for that little tentacle thing. And then you do also get the card, which is the same image as back here. And I want to point out, I mentioned in one of the videos that the, it doesn't really make sense that they are including trading cards with these figures. And somebody was like, well, people collect trading cards. And I'm like, yes, but these aren't exactly trading cards because you're getting one to go with what you buy. It doesn't make sense to buy this figure and trade away the card for another card that doesn't go with this figure. Trading cards work because you're buying a random assortment and you have to try to complete a set or look for a specific thing. These are not trading cards, these are collector cards, which just seem like an, an odd thing for adult collectors that aren't like into collecting trading cards naturally. Okay, does that make sense? Let me know how you guys feel about that, I'm curious. Uh, as somebody who used to collect trading cards, it doesn't make sense to buy them with something like this and then want to get rid of them. That's what I don't get. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the articulation. The head can look up a little bit, not that much. It can look down sufficiently. Side to side is of course no problem. It has sufficient attitude. The shoulder pads are up here and soft. Let's see how that functions. 
The arms do raise up pretty well. We have the ball peg going into the torso again, which lets the whole arm move around. Again, it's very minimal, doesn't hurt anything other than the budget, so I'm not sure it's worth it, but if you like that, then that is good. There's no problem there. Uh, of course, we have our full rotation, but the shoulder pad will be in the way with that. Uh, we have our bicep swivel, no problem. Really ugly elbow in there, but on the mechanical looking suit, it's fine, and you get good range. No real complaints there. It would be a different story if he was completely like human shaped, but since we have this kind of tech suit thing going on, it works out okay. Ball hinge wrists, no problem there. We do have a grippy hand with nothing to grip. That's very irritating. Give him a fist or an open hand if you don't have anything for him to grip. For the torso, diaphragm joint is just terrible. It cannot go farther forward than that. There is no good reason for that. None, zero, that is not good. Going side to side is very minimal. It does rotate, that's okay. And leaning back is also very minimal. Terrible torso joint, really, really bad. The lower torso joint is equally useless. There's a little bit of range there, but like, not equally. It's better than the top, that's for sure. But it's still not great, especially given the fact that we have this giant diaper to hide everything. Not good, that diaper is way too big. It should have been cut down here. There's a whole extra row that didn't need to be there. It throws off the look entirely and it doesn't function well. So that's a bummer. For the hips, they're a little bit soft. They're a little loose, not floppy though. They go out to the side a little better than 45. Going forward, eh, you have to bind it against the diaper a little bit, but they can go, kind of. They kick out to the side, don't have the best range, but they're there, I guess. Going back, you can do the same thing, but it's gonna stretch those cakes. Cake? Singular, I think it's just singular. Thigh swivel is non-existent, essentially. Really nothing there. Double jointed knee, one of the best implemented ones they've done, and it's fairly functional, so that's pretty good. And then for the ankles, they did a better job with the ball hinge than they have in the past. Still not the best range, but you'll get a decent ankle rocker, and the toe hinge is far enough forward that it's okay, but it is still pretty loose. So again, kind of worthless. But not a bad spread of articulation other than the torso. I'll give it a seven, it'll do. You'll be able to pose it well enough to get it in a cool pose, and since the sculpt is definitely the focal point here and the clean-ish paint, I think it's gonna look pretty good for most people's purposes. So I'm gonna give this guy a final verdict of slightly better than average for McFarlane, which is eight out of 10. I think they nailed what they were going for for the most part, and I think most people will be pleased with it. So there you go, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I get it, that's okay too. You can give it a thumbs down, and if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.